I want to show you some things about stereochemistry of the alkenes, special aspects of their structure. But before I do that, take a quick look at butane with me. It's a four carbon structure. We often write the zigzag. It's a four carbon structure. We often write with a zigzag notation like this. It stands for this. And specifically, I want to take a look at the bond that links the middle two carbons, the second carbon and the third carbon. This bond right here, or here in this structure, when we write the butane carefully with the zigzag notation, we notice that there are groups that are pointing up and away or toward us, and down and away or toward us. We use the wedges and dashes for that, and that works pretty well. However, Newman projections make the spatial relationships even easier to see. The circle represents two carbons, and the lines that go to the middle of the circle represent substituents attached to the carbon nearest us. To use the Newman projection, we need to sight along a carbon-carbon bond. So I positioned our eye so we can look along the C2, C3 bond. When we do that, the carbon closest to our eye has a methyl group sticking straight down. Recall this is a methyl group, and to our eye, it looks like it's sticking down. Here it is. The lines that go to the center of the circle represent things attached to the carbon that's closest to our eye. The other two things are hydrogens, and one is up and to the right, and one is up and to the left. For the back carbon, we have a methyl group sticking straight up, according to our eye, and the other two things are hydrogens, sticking down, back, to the left, and down, forward, to the right. Now I'm being careful about this because this is a specific confirmation, and I want to make the point that this confirmation is only one of many, very many, as the rotation about this carbon-carbon bonds lets the orientations of the methyl groups change with respect to each other. I'm talking about rotation about this bond right here. This is a carbon-carbon single bond which permits free rotation. Here's another confirmation. We've rotated around that single bond until the methyl group is sticking down. Nothing has changed about the carbon that's closest to our eye, only the carbon that's furthest from our eye, and now the methyl group is down. So when we sight along this bond, we see the same orientation for the groups that are attached to the carbon nearest the eye. Let's draw those in. These are the lines that go to the center of the circle. And for the carbon that's furthest from our eye, we see that the methyl group now is sticking down. The two hydrogens are up to the right and to the left, as we look at them from the perspective of our eye. My point simply is, free rotation about that carbon-carbon bond allows the molecule to adopt a lot of conformations, and the positions of the methyl groups on the adjacent carbons vary dramatically with respect to each other, from being in opposite directions to being in the very same direction. This is true when we have single bond, but take a look at butene, where we have a double bond. I've drawn the structure of butene with a carbon-carbon bond and a methyl group attached to each of the carbons. It's the same carbon skeleton we looked at for butane, only now the two middle carbons are joined by a double bond. Here it is. And because we have a double bond, the carbons orient themselves with respect to rotation about that carbon-carbon bond, so the two p orbitals are parallel to each other and held in a fixed way. This permits overlap between these two orbitals in a way that lets them share electron density, and that forms the pi bond that holds the molecule together. This can only happen if these atoms are held in a fixed orientation. There is no longer free rotation about this carbon-carbon bond, and all six of the atoms I've shown are in the same plane. This molecule is planar and is held planar. If there were rotation, it would break the pi bond which takes far more energy than is possible. So, my point is, alkenes, in contrast to alkanes, have a very fixed geometry for the carbon-carbon double bond. Now notice, the methyl groups are held toward us, and the two hydrogens are sticking back away from us. Of course, there's another possibility, isn't there? One of the methyl groups could be toward us, and the other one back away from us. I've shown that possibility on the right. On the left is the one I had drawn earlier. So butene has two possible orientations for the two methyl groups. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute. There are two more where both methyl groups are flipped back, and in the other structure, the two methyl groups exchange being front and back. Well, yes, but those molecules are actually identical to the ones I've drawn here. 
there are only two different arrangements of the methyl groups, either on the same side of the double bond or on opposite sides of the double bond. When the groups are oriented on the same side of the double bond, like I've drawn here in this structure, or shown here in this structure, the same side orientation is called cis. In the other case, the methyl groups are on opposite sides of the double bond, whether you look at this structure or this structure. Two drawings of the same thing. Now that methyl groups are on opposite sides, and it's called trans. Now this isn't the whole story. There are other terms that are used also, and I'm going to get back to that. But let's move on for a minute and look at some structures that offer examples of this cis and trans stereochemical relationships. This is the butene structure we just looked at. Two methyl groups on the same side, we call that cis. When the two methyl groups are on opposite sides, we call it trans. Here's another butene structure. I put this in here to make the point that not all alkenes have this kind of stereochemistry. In this case, we have two methyl groups, but they're attached to the same carbon, and two hydrogens attached to the same carbon. So we can't switch these guys and have any other kind of stereochemistry. So when we come to cis and trans stereochemistry, we have to say none. There is no second orientation. Now take a look at this structure. These aren't the same groups, but they're both on the same side, and it would be easy for us to call this cis. And the other orientation is trans. Even though these guys are different groups, we can circle them and we see that the circles are on the same side in one case and are on opposite sides of the double bond in the other case. So we can still use that cis and trans terminology. Now take a look at this example. This is more complicated. We see two chlorines, and we see they have a trans relationship to each other. But we also have a bromine here. And this bromine, which is heavier than chlorine, might thought to be highest priority. And we might call this cis rather than trans. My point is that for tri-substituted alkenes, the cis and trans nomenclature does not work well and is not used. We need to go to another convention for stating the stereochemistry of compounds like this. Rather than cis and trans terminology, the formal convention is Z and E. Z stands for zusammen, which in German means together, and E stands for entgegen, which means opposite in German. Using the ZE nomenclature then, we can assign the stereochemistry of these compounds we've already looked at. The two methyl groups are on the same side, together, so we call it Z in this first example, and the stereoisomer that has the two methyl groups on opposite sides is called E. There's nothing for this one, and for this one, the chlorine and the methyl group both are on the same sides, and they have what's called the highest priority. The priority system is exactly the same as the priority system used for assigning R and S to absolute configurations. We look at the weight of the atom that's directly attached to each carbon. And in this case, the chlorine is heavier than the hydrogen. So the circle of chlorine is the highest priority. And in this case, the carbon represented for this methyl group is heavier than the hydrogen. So it's circled as well. It has the highest priority. And the two highest priority groups, the one on this carbon and the one on this carbon, are on the same side. So we call it Z. Moving on to the other stereoisomer, the higher priority group chlorine compared to hydrogen is up in this double bond direct drawing, and the higher priority group here, the methyl, carbon compared to hydrogen, is down. They're on opposite sides, so we call it E. Now we're back to this case that was somewhat confusing. Let's be careful about applying the rules for stereochemistry to determine E and Z. The system is as follows. Look at one carbon, not the other, we'll focus on this carbon that I just wrote in tan. Using the priority rules, we compare the weights of the atoms that are attached directly to carbon. The weight of chlorine is heavier than the weight of hydrogen. So the chlorine is a higher priority substituent. Now let's look at the other carbon. When we compare the weight of bromine attached directly to carbon to chlorine, which is attached directly to the same carbon, bromine is heavier, so it's higher priority. We see that the higher priority groups are on the same side of the double bond. So it's zusammen, Z. Take a look at another case. Again, we'll look at one carbon first. Let's look at the left one. I've just drawn it as tan and compare the priority of the chlorine to the hydrogen. Chlorine is heavier, it's higher priority. 
Now we'll do the other carbon. Now we compare the priority of chlorine versus bromine, and bromine is heavier. Chlorine and bromine are on opposite sides of the double bond, so it's E. Now I'll take a look at this example. It's the same as the one that I just did, except we put a CH2 group attached to the double bond, and then the bromine. We'll look at the left carbon first. The higher priority group is chlorine. We'll look at the right carbon second. Now in this molecule, we're comparing chlorine to a carbon. Recall that this is a CH2. And my point is that we're comparing atoms, chlorine to carbon. We're not comparing groups, chlorine to all this big thing here. If we were, the bottom group would have higher priority, but we're not. We're comparing atoms, the first atom attached to the carbon. We're comparing chlorine with carbon. And chlorine is heavier. So this stereochemistry is called Z because the higher priority groups are on the same side. Using this system for stereochemistry, you can always unambiguously assign the stereochemistry. Using cis or tran, that designation works well when there's only two substituents that are different. As soon as we have at least three different things attached to the carbons, we must switch to the EZ stereochemical designation. And finally, let me point out that because many alkenes have this E and C stereochemical isomerism, the EZ terminology is made part of the formal name of alkenes. I'll talk about the naming of alkenes in another video.